Hello, thank you so much for being here. I'm Shannon Lindsay. I'm a faculty member here at the UCF School of Visual Arts and Design. I'm also the gallery director and a practicing professional artist. My name is Larry Cooper. I'm also a faculty member at the University of Central Florida School of Visual Art and Design and I teach um, bookbinding and printmaking and I also work at the gallery here at UCF. We're here today to walk you through some of the common questions and challenges that we have a lot working with emerging artists and working with student artists about how to frame work. So there are a ton of ways in which you could go about framing your work, all the way from using a store-bought frame to building a custom frame, which is very costly. So our goal today is to give you a little bit more of a, a budget-friendly approach to using an existing or store-bought frame to frame a two-dimensional piece like a drawing, a photograph, um, a print, anything that is two-dimensional on paper that would go into a frame. So we are going to walk through a few different options to where you buy a purchased um, or store-bought frame and it's going to come with a mat a lot of the times uh, already in the packaging so it's going to come with your outside either wood or sometimes metal and it's going to come with a glass or plexiglass and then a pre-cut mat so we're going to walk you through a few different ways in which you can use this store-bought frame starting with using the pre-cut mat with your work okay so before we get started this is a layout of generally some of the tools and materials that you're going to need to do any kind of framing so first and foremost we have our frame that we purchased from the store and we have some mat board so mat board that either came with the frame or a new piece of mat board as well as a piece of foam cord that we will use for the backing we have a ruler we've got a pencil exacto knife scissors eraser that's going to really help us with our measurement to make sure we get everything placed exactly where it needs to get placed and then we have our mat cutter here with extra blades and depending on the approach you take for the mat you might possibly need to cut some strips of paper to be able to make these corners you can actually purchase these pre-made but in reality it's just a strip of piece of paper that you fold to create a corner to be able to rest the corners of your paper in the frame and then as you go into putting the work in the frame after you've got your mat established you're going to make sure you want to have some cleaner Depending on the surface that's in your frame, whether it's glass or plexiglass, you want to make sure you have the appropriate cleaner. Glass cleaner for glass and then plexi cleaner for plexiglass with a microfiber cloth. So that way it's going to really help you reduce lint and any extra things that you really don't want visible inside the frame. And then going to finishing, we're going to have some D-rings to and some wire with some wire cutters that is going to create the hardware on the back of the frame to be able to hang it on the wall. In addition, we have a variety of different types of tapes. So we have some acid-free linen tape here, which is activated by water. We've got some acid-free double-sided tape, and then we have painter's tape or artist tape. And then essentially, this is what the finished product will look like. And then of course, you need your artwork. Okay, so with the pre-cut mat, you are pretty much set on the dimensions of the opening. So it's just a matter of if it fits to the image that you're going to use and how you want it to work with your piece. And you know, your existing work, when you're in the store shopping around for a pre-existing frame, if you really want that pre-cut mat to work for you, you wanna make sure that the opening is at least 
an inch or so smaller than the actual paper that you have. You wanna make sure that on the reverse side, you have at least a half inch of your paper that extends beyond that matte cut opening. That way you have enough room to make sure it's secure and you're not gonna get the edge of that piece revealed um, on the front side. So the piece that we have now is currently on a pretty big piece of paper. So as you can see, Larry can kind of move it around in that opening and you have a little more variety in which how much space maybe you have on the top versus the bottom. Um, and maybe Larry, there's definitely some standards and how much, especially with printmaking, how, that you have a little heavier on the bottom wow. than on the top. So, um, do you wanna talk, maybe like, is this, what do you think about this configuration? Yeah, this is a good configuration on this. There's a lot of um, space. The emphasis is on the print image. There's space for the signature and the signage of the print and the numbering. And so then once you get it, essentially laid out exactly how you want it, you're gonna make sure that you can secure it on the back before you go and you put it into your frame. So once you determine the placement of the work inside that mat opening, now you are going to work on mounting it so that way it will stay exactly in place whenever you put it in the frame. So we are going to take a backing board. Let Larry tell you about that. So this is from Core. This is what the piece is going to be mounted on. And we are going to mount this piece. We're going to use, these are just corners that are paper. And we are going to float the piece using corners because what this does is we can secure this to the backing piece using a variety of materials, but this gives us options because we are not touching the artwork and this secures the artwork. Um, I turn this. This secures the artwork and without, it, it secures it to the backing board and it lets it, um, it's not like taping the artwork where we're actually physically putting any kind of adhesives on the actual piece of artwork. So we're not gonna damage the artwork and we're not gonna take away from the value of the artwork. And, you know, it's very important, you know, you, you might hear people say, you know, using archive or using acid free, there are a lot of different types of tapes out there and, you know, things like masking tape, they actually have acid in the adhesive. And so if you put some acid based tape on paper over an extended amount of time, it's actually going to damage that paper. So the goal is to try to not have as, as very little actually touching the paper that your work is on as possible. So like Larry said, these corners allow us to use a variety of different types of tapes because we're just attaching it to this piece of paper and not the actual work. So we have some linen tape here, which is really a professional standard for professional framers, but then you could also use something like artist tape or painter's tape because you're not putting it on the actual work. So. The other thing you can do is you can um, put your mat piece on, make sure everything's square and in the place you want it, and then um, now you can attach those corners in place. And attaching those corners in place that secures and locks your piece, the artwork in place. So it's not gonna move. So it's all nice and secured. And something that's important to know too, especially works on paper, when there's differences in temperature or humidity, that paper is gonna shift and move a little bit. And so by using these corners, it's allowing that paper freedom if it does yeah, wanna move. Maybe. Whereas if you put tape directly on it and it needs to adjust with humidity or temperature, it's gonna kind of tug at that paper and maybe cause like a permanent 
change in the paper itself, where is this, it's with those changes, it's gonna go with it and it's gonna stay pretty flat. Now our mat can go on. And the piece is ready to go into the frame. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we're going to do the actual putting into the frame itself after we go through a couple different steps for options for the mat. Um, so thanks Larry for, this is how you would repurpose a pre-cut mat. So next what we're going to do is we're going to cut a custom mat. So maybe you find the perfect size frame in the store, but perhaps the mat opening is not going to work with your piece. Maybe your piece is actually a little bit smaller and so therefore the hole in this is too big um, or maybe it's not quite large enough you could take a step if you need the opening to be a little larger you could just cut this existing mat a little bit more to create a bigger opening or you could do what larry is going to show us by taking a brand new piece of mat board and cutting a custom mat. So that is gonna be a lot less expensive and more budget friendly to find an existing frame and buy a $5 piece of mat board and cut it to the exact size you need versus paying for a whole custom frame and mat. So I'm finding the center because I wanna make sure that when I do have that cut out in the middle of this mat that it is going to be centered and it's not going to be slightly off or crooked, right? So this is a 16 by 12 piece of mat board. So I just made a mark at eight. And I know based on this measurement here, I want my opening to be six inches by four inches. So my six inches, whenever we set the mat in front of it, we kind of eyeballed about how much space we wanted to be on the top of the mat versus the bottom. So we determined we want the top part of the mat opening to be about three inches from the top. So I've made my center marks here and now I'm gonna make a mark at three inches from the top. So that can give me a guide for my top line that I have to cut. And then we determined I want it to be five inches on the bottom. And what that's gonna do is make it a little heavier of um, a blank mat area on the bottom, which is sort of a, a like personal preference, but is really a convention, especially in printmaking, they tend to have a little heavier space on the bottom. So this way I'm gonna connect these. It's actually these. a visual thing too. Yeah, yeah. Cause you can look at a, a three inch mat if it's three inches square all the way around and you look at it on the wall, um, the bottom will look smaller. But if it's three inches and four inches, it'll look even when you look at it visually because it looks, it's a, it's a visual eye thing. So I'm just gonna make a, like a dotted line for my center because I really just wanna use that as a guide to make sure my six by four opening is gonna be centered. So if I want this to be six inches, I can put it the three right on my middle line and make a mark at my zero and at my six and do the same down here. The zero and the six. And I'm extending these lines. Obviously our cutout is only this small square, but I'm extending these lines because we're gonna use the mark on the guide of the bleed to tell us exactly where to stop. So this is what you look like. This will always just be on the back. So you're not gonna draw on the front of the mat. This will be on the back. Pass it to Larry to cut it. Where would you buy something like this? Um, online. Art, the art supply stores have them, mm -hmm. and you can buy them online. Logan has come out with And this is a really big one, right? So, you know. There's a little smaller version of this. I have one at home that's a little smaller version of this. Not much smaller, but a little smaller that does pretty decent size artwork. Nice. All right. So, yeah, we're setting it up so that bevel, these give us a beveled edge to our mats, and the bevel 
this sliding out away from the artwork. And then that way on the front side of it, your bevel is gonna be exposed this way, right? Whenever you see it, you can see the core of the mat exposed this way. So we're cutting it on the back side in this angle. And you'll get to where they have frame, they have mats that have colored insides and all that stuff. And that's all for people do it to match the artwork and the things like that. But the mat is not there to do anything but to hide what's around the piece and to highlight the piece. That's why artwork is matted and that's why we use like to use like three inch or bigger mats on work it's so a little print like this can go up on a wall next to a big painting and when somebody's looking at it that big painting doesn't come into play because this mat helps the viewer focus in on the print and helps give it more visual presence and visual yeah, yeah. and that painting it helps take away from the painting and what's all around it. So we don't need a big gaudy green, purple mat and gold. No. And I, would, <laughs> yeah. I think 100% go with white. I think, you know, unless you have some sort of conceptual motivation for why you would choose a colored frame or colored mat, I think go with white frame, a white mat, because typically this is going to be shown on a gallery wall or a museum wall, right? Which is a generally pretty standard of a white wall. Um, so places that you can buy things like this are going to be your art supply stores, um, you know, you can go to Michael's and buy, a, they have a ton of pre-made uh, mat, your frames with mats, Ikea, you can go online to places like Dick Blick, um, Jerry's, Artorama, there's a lot of places that you could buy things in person in a physical store or online. And when in doubt, just go with a simple, you know, white or maybe a black frame, you know, don't go too crazy with the color so great so yeah you can see the two looks that the piece gets so this was our this was the original mat that came in the frame right like from the store and then the other one is the one that Larry cut sort of custom for that piece so when this is all done and is in this it really gives the appearance of a, a fully custom made frame but all you've done is just cut a, cut a custom mat so you have just spent like another five dollars essentially um, but it does help elevate the appearance of it um, if you want to have some options so um, the next and final option we're going to show you is maybe there is a reason that you don't want to hide the edge of the of the work of the paper maybe there is something that goes all the way to the edge of the paper perhaps it's a drawing or a mixed media or a pastel and it's using the whole surface of the paper and you don't want to cover any any edge of it or maybe even it's a really nice paper that has an interesting edge and so you might want to do what we call floating and so floating it is going to be putting it essentially on top of a piece of mat board and it's not going to conceal anything so i'll um, pass it over to larry to get us started with floating basically it is going to go into the frame just like this but instead of having the little um, corner pieces to mm -hmm. hold it in place mm -hmm. it needs to be secured to this piece of mat board so it doesn't fall down and the best way to do that is to use something we have to attach it to that and we're going to use something that's like the linen tape or something that's archival acid free acid free because we're going to attach it to that so what we've done is we've cut the little pieces of um tape and we're going to make a little t so this just it's you can you can do it like a stamp and lick it um or you can just 
use have, a bunch of water in this have some water on a rag and get these wet and that the water will activate the adhesive so that way you don't have to worry about this tape, you know, the adhesive going bad um, because it's not activated until it's wet. Yeah. And it is archival. I have, I have a weight. weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do have a weight. And then we're going to use a weight to hold the print in place so it doesn't move. I'm just sticking the top, the little T piece to the top of the print to attach it in place. And while we're doing this, it's important to say when you get started to put your pieces in any kind of frame, working with your mats, make sure your hands are clean and dry because all of these materials are going to pick up everything that's on your hands, so make sure that you have clean hands when you get started. The little T just goes on the top to hold it in place. So the reason you would do like that T shape, so what happens is we have a strip of adhesive that is going right onto that mat board, and then we have a strip that's going down, which is actually attaching to the back of the paper. And what that allows to do, you might be thinking, well, why don't I just do a loop of tape and just stick it flat? What that allows is that movement. Like I mentioned before, where temperature changes, humidity changes, is gonna cause changes in that paper. So this way it's hinged, you know, with a T-shaped piece of tape. So that way there is a little bit of movement that's allowed within the frame with that paper to kind of respond to those environmental changes, but it's not gonna tug it too, too much and cause permanent damage. Yeah. And it's secured enough in place that it'll yeah. be exactly where you want it in the frame. Yep, and then the paper has, yeah, it's got its movement. Um. Well, should we put it in a frame? Okay. All right. So here we have on this side, we've already deconstructed our pre-made frame, and this has had many lives, as you can tell on the back, and we have used this many times for a lot of different artwork. What's really nice about these store-bought frames and the ability to cut down these mats and customize the opening is you can reuse these frames. So maybe you have an exhibition coming up, you can buy a certain size frame that you know all of the work will fit in and you can, and you can interchange them, right? Change the mats when you need to put something else in them. So that way uh, you have a good variety and you always have a frame on hand that you can use for your work. So uh, this one is a black um, like wood frame. A lot of the times what you're going to get in the store is like a wood or like a particle kind of board frame and sometimes you might get a metal frame. These are pretty common and pretty economical whenever you're buying them pre-made and then it's going to come with some sort of surface material that's going to protect it, right? So it's going to either come with glass or it's going to come with plexiglass. I would say more common than not, you might see plexiglass. The, if it comes with real glass, it's gonna be probably a little bit more expensive and it's definitely gonna be heavier. And if, say, you're prepping for an exhibition or you're gonna be exhibiting your work somewhere, it's really important that you pay attention to any kind of restrictions because there are some spaces that don't accept work it's, if it's put in a frame with glass just because of the chances that it might break, break or things, whereas plexiglass is a little bit more resilient, but there are different steps that you would take in terms of cleaning and we'll go into that. So, so we have our piece already ready, floating on that piece of mat board. We have our frame and we have our glass. So 
How do we start, Larry? So if it's one that's being floated, the trick is you have to, you can't, we don't want the glass touching the print. So we have to put the glass into the frame and then we've got to put some spacers in to separate it from the print um, so it doesn't touch the print because the mat if it had a mat the mat's protecting it from touching the glass otherwise this would be um, touching the print and we don't want it touching the we don't want the glass touching the print so the first thing we're going to have to do is going to have to clean the glass and so because this is glass, I'm going to use, we are not sponsored. <laughs> I'm going to use like something like Windex glass cleaner to clean the glass. It's really important if you get a plexiglass frame that you actually do not use glass cleaner on plexiglass because it can create scratches in the plexiglass. So you would use a special like plexiglass cleaner in that sense. So because this is glass, I can use the Windex and I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth. It's just the best because it's not gonna leave any fuzzies behind and it's gonna give you a nice clean surface. So Vinegar we wanna, and water work. yeah. And, and when, in, when in a pinch, a microfiber cloth with water is also gonna work. Okay, so I just finished cleaning both sides of the glass and I'm just gonna set it in the base of this frame and just make sure that you don't have any like if you use a microfiber cloth it's going to really help get away any fuzzies or little pieces of lint but you want to look it over first make sure that you don't have any of that if you have any compressed air at home and little cans like you clean keyboards with that's really helpful for getting some of those pieces out because nothing is worse than like putting all your frames together Get ready to hang it on the wall and you notice little pieces of lint inside. So be um, take a, a good amount of time to make sure that you clean your glass and get everything clean and ready before you put your work in. So we went ahead and prepped these spacers. So you can actually purchase spacers by framing companies, which are these plastic clear strips. A lot of the times here, again, this is the version of being a little bit more budget friendly is we will just simply cut little strips of foam core and then we put double-sided tape on the other side of it and so what that's going to do is it's going to create a little ledge that the, the our piece that's floating on the mat board is going to touch this ledge when we put it in the frame it's not going to touch the actual glass so really the gist of it is that mat is the purpose of it is really to allow space between your work and the plexiglass or the glass you don't ever want to have your work touching flat onto that surface because it can damage it over a good amount of time so these spacers are just going to allow that quarter inch of space between the glass and the artwork itself um, and while larry is laying out these spacers it's important to know there are some limitations with certain materials and plexiglass versus glass. The biggest misunderstanding or things I think that people don't always know is you have to be very careful when you are framing charcoal pastel drawings because when you put those in plexiglass, if you keep them in a plexiglass frame for an extended period of time, like a year or two years, there's static that is actually inside that plexiglass and it can actually lift that charcoal and that pastel and stick it on the back side of that plexiglass. So your drawing actually gets lifted off of the paper. If you are exhibiting your charcoal drawing, pastel drawing for a couple of months, you know, in an exhibition, it's gonna be no problem. Just make sure you're not in the habit of storing it long-term in a plexiglass frame. So if you get it back from the exhibition, make sure you take it out of the frame and you can just store it in a clean, you know, dry space. So that, those spacers now are holding the glass in place. And then this. Mm -hmm. 
and that's going to keep it separated from the glass. And then our foam core <laughs> goes into place. And we didn't mention this before, but you want to make sure when you are determining the width of your spacers, there's this little lip where the frame goes a little bit beyond. So you want to make sure that your spacer is not wider than that gap of the frame because you don't want that spacer to be visible or go on top of your paper at all. Looks great, Larry. Then once the phone for... Um, so... Larry's gonna walk us through this this point gun, but I wanna just take a moment to say, a lot of times when you're buying store-bought frames, they're gonna come with points already in them. Yeah. So these are these little black metal tabs that you have to bend back to actually take out all of the materials inside the frame. You can definitely reuse those, but if you have constructed a frame like we did, where you had to add a spacer, those pre-inserted points are no longer going to work because it's not at the right height. Now this is this is elevated a little bit higher than it was previously, so we're going to have to add our own points in there to make sure it's secure. Yeah. secure now it's not gonna move it's not gonna fall out Oosh. and we're almost ready to hang it on the wall the last step that we want to show you is how to create some hardware on the back of the frame to make sure it's ready to hang on the wall so there are some misconceptions about what you need to actually hang this on the wall you do not want to just take this to the wall and put a screw in the wall and hang it from the frame because that is going to put pressure on this frame. It's gonna cause it to wanna to separate, which could eventually cause the frame to fall off of the wall, possibly damage your work, right? So there are a few conventions that we have for how to prep and add some hardware to the back of this to hang it onto your wall. So first thing you wanna make sure is remember where the top of your work is, right? So the orientation of this work, this is the top of the frame. So when I lay it straight down, I know this is the top of the work um, and then this is the bottom. That's really important because we're gonna apply, we're gonna use some wire with some D-rings and attach wire to the back of this. So. Whenever you are going to attach wire, a lot of the time store-bought frames don't actually have wire already on them. Sometimes it might have like a little sawtooth um, like hook on the back of it, which is okay and it's doable, especially if you're hanging it in your house or something. But if you are sending this off to be professionally hung in a gallery or a museum, it's important to take this extra step because this is going to add more security to your work. And if you are in the situation of hanging your own work, this is really going to help ease that process of hanging your work. And it's going to, again, give you some more security. So the reason you need to know where the top versus the bottom is, when you go to attach wire, you want to attach it about one third from the top of the piece. Then that way, whenever you have that wire stretched over, it's not too low. If my wire is too low, it's gonna cause that frame to really stick out off of the wall. About one third is gonna help it sit as, as like parallel to the wall as possible. So uh, we already have this wire prepped with what we call D-rings. So these D-rings you can purchase in bulk. Um, they're especially cost-effective online and they're going to be this type of metal ring here it has this kind of circle or loop and then it has this tag at the bottom with a hole in it and it always usually comes with a special screw that's going to fit that exact hole right so this is how we're going to install our wire is we're going to attach our d-rings to this frame and then we have our wire attached and we'll stretch across here. If you have a framed piece or even a canvas, you know, a painting on canvas, D-rings are really, really great um, because they're versatile. You can use them on smaller pieces like this to hold your wire in place. But say you had a larger frame, I would say if you have a frame that's 
maybe at least three feet. Um, when you get bigger than about three feet, wire is not necessarily going to be the best way to secure that. But what you can do is you can just attach the two D rings on the back with no wire. And when you go to hang it, you can put the screw right through that D ring and it's going to be very, very secure on the wall. So if you're a little unsure, D rings are nice because you already have that hardware in place. And if you can put a piece of wire to connect it, that's great. And then if you decide the wire isn't quite heavy enough to hold the weight of it, you can just attach straight to the wall with a screw with the D-ring. So um, I'm gonna let Larry put these D-rings into the frame with this screwdriver. So we're kind of working in a little reverse here. A lot of times you're gonna start, you're really gonna start with your D-rings in here first, and then you're gonna attach the wire. Okay, so to back up a little bit, whenever you purchase these packs of D-rings, they're gonna come like this essentially with multiple D-rings in there with the provided screws. And so for each piece that you're framing, you're gonna need two D-rings, right? So they're gonna come and have this opening kind of shape and then have the hole, which is where your screw goes in. So, but there's a particular way in which you need to attach the wire to the D-ring, which is gonna help with the integrity and the security to make sure it's really gonna stay on there and it's not gonna pop off. Um, and it will really hold a significant amount of weight in a you know bigger frame if you wire it correctly. So, you're gonna have to invest in some wire and generally the wire is gonna come in a pack similar to this and you're gonna to wanna to go for an 18 to 20 gauge wire is a pretty good average thickness and the way gauges essentially tell you the thickness of the wire. So the lower the number, the thicker the wire is. So if you get into like 24 gauges, that might be just a little bit too thin and not be strong enough to hold what you need. If you get any higher than like 18, if you start getting into like the 12s, it might be so thick and harder to manipulate just by hand. So I usually recommend an 18 to 20 gauge is gonna be your best bet. And so what you're gonna do after it's attached to the frame, you are going to take your wire and loop it through the opening of that D-ring. And you wanna give yourself, after you loop it through, a few inches on this end, right? You don't wanna just give yourself a little bit, you wanna give yourself a few inches. And then I usually pinch it in place, then that way it's not gonna to wanna to slip. And then I'm just gonna go by hand and I'm gonna take that small, piece that I extended out of it and I'm going to coil it right on top of that base wire that I have. And as you see, as I'm coiling it, I'm going as close to the previous coil as I can and as tight on that base wire as possible. You don't want to do it really loose where you can see the, the like big gaps in the coils because that's not going to be very strong. So you want to coil it as closely as possible to the previous coil and as tight to that baseline as you can. Now you don't have to have six inches of a coil. I usually go three quarter to one inch and then you can just cut off the excess. So one of the major tools that you're gonna need to, to frame is a pair of needle nose pliers. And if you are sort of investing in tools for your toolkit at home, you wanna go ahead and make sure that you find a pair of needle nose pliers that have wire cutters built into them. So they do have them that don't have it and it'll be an empty circle right here in the middle. But you can see here on the back, there's a wire cutter built into these. There's these two little blades here. So when I put wire all the way in the back, it's actually gonna cut my wire. So the plier part itself is in the front where you can see this like alligator mouth, right, coming together. And then this part where the circle is, is where your cutter is. So if you're trying to bend wire, you don't wanna go too far back and you're gonna cut it. Um, so you really have like two tools in one here. So I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna cut off that excess. And then I'm gonna use the tip of these to pinch it and coil it together, all right? So 
that is essentially how you would prepare both sides. And then after you have that on here, you're gonna stretch wire and connect it and do the same thing on the other D-ring. But you wanna make sure as you're stretching that wire that you're giving yourself a little bit of play. You don't wanna pull it totally, totally taut. You wanna give yourself a little bit of extra. And if you're a little bit unsure of how much extra, you can hold it up and you can put a little bit of weight on it. What you want is to imagine when it's hanging on a wall and you have it hanging from a screw or from a nail that it's gonna have the weight of the frame on it in the very center. And so when the weight is on here, you wanna make sure that you don't have too much slack to where it's gonna be visible on top outside of the frame. You wanna make sure it's still under this frame, right? So you wanna have this kind of like rainbow shape um, going on. If it's too tight and too straight, you're not going to be able to get your hand behind the wire to be able to attach it to the screw on the wall. So you just want a little bit of play and again you want to be able to see that sort of like arc rainbow shape on the other side. So I think that that is our frame and it really at this point it's ready it's ready to hang in a gallery. <laughs>